Welcome back. My name is Matt. This is Hidden Light. I want to do a year in review video. For those of you longtime subscribers, uh, thank you for joining us. I pick a camera every year because I own a camera store and uh, uh, it's too many options. You want to like take a camera for like two hours and then take a different camera. And, uh, so I pick one camera every year and I try and shoot with that camera pretty much exclusively all year. I still have to do some film testing and camera testing and other stuff that goes on, but by and large, I pick one camera. This year was the F6. And listen, that's a heck of a camera. It's a real good camera. I gave myself a secondary goal this year, which was to shoot a roll of film a day. And I failed spectacularly at that goal. I actually, okay, so I started off real strong, which for those of you who know me is pretty much par for the course. I started off and I shot a roll of film every day for basically the first four months of the year, more or less. Uh, it wasn't always a roll of film, you know, sun up to sundown or whatever. Sometimes I would shoot 10 or 15 rolls in a day and I would sort of aggregate out. And that was what I was aiming for. The point of this was not to shoot a roll of film every day and to find something to shoot every day. It was to encourage myself to increase volume because the more I shoot, the better I shoot. It's pretty much how it works out. So that would have been 365 rolls or by the time we're shooting this just shy of that. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, instead of that, according to my current Lightroom catalog, I shot 4,910 photos on film, which is about 136 rolls. The vast majority of that was black and white. And almost all the black and white was HP5. <laughs> there were a couple of rolls of 24 in there, but almost everything was rolls of 36. So we're going to ballpark it at 130, 140. So, um, not quite halfway. Actually, not really even close to halfway. But, I did take a lot of photos. I got to use the F6 and really get comfortable with it. It's kind of cheating, because I started as a Nikon guy. Nikon? Nikon? Uh, I've been shooting Nikon since the very beginning, since my D50. Uh, uh, <laughs> back in the good old days, and my original Nikon FM. And so I already felt pretty confident, confident and comfortable with the camera, but man, did I have fun with it? Like there's something about, especially coming from the year of the eight by 10, which if you haven't seen that video, go check it out because, oh my God, uh, the eight by 10 was a slow process and the 35 millimeter was just a treat to be able to just blast through photos. I'm a motor drive kind of guy. I like a chicka, 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 chicka. So it was perfect for that. I used basically three lenses all year. I used the 28 2.8 to convince myself that this is a Leica Q2 or now Q3. I used a travel zoom 28 to 300, which you may scoff at, but it's better than you want it to be. It does pretty darn good. And um, honestly, the highlight of the year for me was figuring out this 50 millimeter F1.4. I've always been a 50, 50 millimeter guy, a nifty 50 guy. And for years and years and years, I've used the 1.8, which is like a hundred dollar lens. So I got the opportunity to pick up this 1.4 and I thought like, oh, it's basically another 50, who cares? But it's better. It's really good. I love the bocaliciousness of this lens and it's not that much more expensive. So that honestly was the highlight of the year for me is discovering this lens and how much I like using it wide open. I'm a wide open kind of guy. So if you give me a 1.4, I'm going to shoot it at 1.4. You give me a 1.0, which I would love. I'm going to shoot it at 1.0 all the time. It's just the way I'm wired. So anyway, um, all of my film, comes back to me just like it comes back to you and everyone who gets film processed here in our cutesy little envelopes. And then I take out my negatives, sleeved and ready to go into a binder. Oh God, and I stuff them in a binder. This one is labeled 
2023 January through whatever because if I had shot 300 rolls there's no way you're fitting 300 in this it's not gonna happen and actually 100 and whatever I've got in here it's basically full to the brim and I can't even use the um, this binder, the three ring binder things. So what I've basically been doing is as I get my film squared away, I label it with more or less the time that I shot it, what I was using to shoot it and where I was. And I stuff it in here. And like, as you can see, we're, we're basically full up. Um, so for those of you who are contemplating the purchase of a archival three ring binder for your film, which we sell, holds about a hundred and something rolls before you're just full and you can't anymore. Uh, I don't do contact sheets with my film and stick them in here. This is just film and it fits barely. And it's heavy. It's heavier than you sort of want it to be. Um, everything is organized by twin check so I can go find it later. It's also in my computer by that same twin check just like your film is when you have us process your film. Now, the follow up question. Zzz. Zzz. Follow up questions. One. Am I going to try shooting a roll a day again? No! <laughs> I don't think that I will. <laughs> um, volume for the sake of volume actually really kept me going during last winter. It gave me a goal that I could achieve every day. I was having a really rough time with just existing during the winter. It was so much damn snow and I got sick of it real quick. So that goal was really helpful. And then when the snow disappeared, right around the same time that I picked up the X-Pan, we were shooting the flood and stuff, um, I stopped caring because it wasn't as cold and as miserable and I didn't have to have that little goal to get me through every day. So I stopped shooting so much and that's okay. Uh, if I need to create that motivation for myself again, I know one way to do that. And I think it would be a lot easier to do in medium format. Because even 645, I mean 16 frames as opposed to 36, 37, 38 is like much easier to pull off over the course of a day. And it ends up costing me, in terms of raw cost, more or less the same amount. Should we do the math as to how much I spent on film? That's terrifying. 136 rolls. Most of it was HP5, and I think we sell that for 10 bucks a roll. So, um... 1300 bucks in film, give or take. And then of course my processing is free because I own the place. Um, not too bad. I couldn't have bought, say, like a new camera, new, new camera for that kind of money. Um, so that's cool. It's kind of fun. Terrifying. I thought it was gonna be a lot higher than that. Especially if I'd shot a lot of color, that would have been ugly. Okay, so am I gonna do it again? No. Follow-up question number two, what camera am I going to use for next year? I don't know the answer to that. God? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I am testing two cameras right now that I'm sort of thinking about. The first <coughs> is this Pentax 645N. I don't know why nobody likes this camera. We've had it for sale for like over a year. I mean, it's big, it's sort of 90s-esque. It's got some heft to it, but it's a joy to shoot. I put a roll through it this week just to sort of play around with it and see if I like it and see how it feels. And once I dialed in the diopter and looking through the camera was sharp, I really enjoyed it. It's a little bigger than I really think I want to carry around, but I get that 645 negative, which is a size I've actually never shot. I went in my started my medium format experience. I went straight to six by six and six by seven. So six four five is not a format I've played around in. I'm gonna see what my film looks like when it comes back from this. It's a contender. The other contender, which I'm entirely too stupid to use, is the X Pen. Uh, if you haven't seen the video about this, uh, find it because I'm too dumb to compose in this format like Alex give us like a little preview of a 2.4 to 1 just in this shot just shrink it okay ready Shoot. ah I can't live like that it's so freaking wide and that is a challenge and that's a challenge that I want to tackle it's also 
a small camera that weighs almost nothing, and I get a similar number of frames. I get 18 frames to a roll. So we're in the right ballpark here. Fewer frames per roll lets me sort of switch out and have a little bit more fun. The difference is like six, five or six, seven pounds for this monstrosity with this specific lens versus like a pound and change. That's my guess. Uh, I really like how light it is. That's, that's, if I had an M6, I would probably use that, but I don't, and I'm not going to buy another one. I've told myself I let it go, and it, I'm going to give myself at least another couple of years before I pick up another Leica. So, God, this video's long. That's kind of where I'm at. The F6 was a good camera. It did its job. I took lots of pictures. I'm going to finish out the year still shooting with this camera. So I've got a couple more rolls. Uh, uh, I would say I could make it to 150, but I won't. <laughs> um, and you'll have to wait to find out what camera I choose for next year. I'm going to do a couple of test rolls in each of these and sort of feel it out for a little while. See which one I actually prefer to use. See where I'm getting decent results. Uh, autofocus is really cool. I'm an autofocus kind of cat. This camera has autofocus, and this one does not. So, we'll just leave that right there. Anyway, thanks for joining me for a year of 35mm after a psychotic year of 8x10 and many years of medium format. It was nice, and I, it may continue. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, not that it matters, because we're just here doing this for fun. Um, yeah, see you in the next one.